Welcome to the fourth week of Three Books to Go. I'm Christine with the Cold Lake Public Library, and I'm back again this week with three more books to recommend that I think you're going to love. And this time I wanted to do something with that request that I received for feel good, happy books. And when I started making lists, I realized, of course, there's lots of different descriptions of what people find comforting or feel good go to books. Um, so I'll probably do a few of them over the next few weeks. I'll interspersed those with other things, but um, I'll return to this idea again under different themes. But for the first recommendation of feel-good books, I wanted to go with quirky things. So that's kind of my go-to. If I'm feeling down or stressed out and I'm looking for comfort, then I'm going to look for something that's that's quirky and has little oddballs like, like this kitty right here. And so that's true for TV shows too. So like if I'm looking for something to watch and relax, I would be like Gilmore Girls or Pushing Daisies, Parks and Rec. Those are the kind of things I enjoy. So if you enjoy those things too, then you might also find that you love these books that I'm suggesting. So for week one of Feel Good Books, let's get started. My first recommendation for quirky fiction is The Woefield Poultry Collective by Susan Juby. Actually, this one was mentioned in the comments on Facebook by another librarian, so you can consider it a double recommendation. Susan Juby is an author from BC. She's originally from Smithers, but she's now based out of Nanaimo on Vancouver Island. And she started off writing YA fiction, so she's written quite a few standalones. She also has a series, Alice, I think, which is quite well known, so you might have come across that one in the past. And all of the books feature quite a bit of humor. A lot of them are in small town BC and have kind of oddball cast of characters and this one's no different. So it's called the Woefield Poultry Collective in Canada but it was published in the US under the title Home to Woefield just so you know if you see that one it's the same book and on her site it describes it as a comedy about a young woman from Brooklyn who inherits a derelict farm on Vancouver Island and she also says it won the Leacock Medal for Humor and I make sure to work that fact into every conversation I have which some people may find charming. <laughs> So the description of this book is that the main character, Prudence Burns, is a well-intentioned New Yorker full of back-to-the-land ideals, but without an iota of related skills or experience. And she just inherited Woefield Farm, 30 acres of scrubland, dilapidated buildings, and one half-sheared sheep named Bertie. The bank is about to foreclose, so Prudence must turn things around fast. One of the great things about this story is that it has, it, it alternates voices. So there's first person narrative from four different people who all have super different, very distinct voices. So the main character is Prudence and she is capital P plucky, super optimistic. She just, nothing can get her down. And so there's definitely some humor in there because of course there's a lot of stuff that's conspiring to get her down, but she's trying to stay sunny and bright and happy in the face of all that. Contrast that with Earl, who is a spry 70-something banjo playing foreman who kind of comes with the land and it has an inherent distrust of newfangled ideas, but also a substantial family secret. There's also Seth from across the road, who is an alcoholic, agoraphobic, celebrity blogging guy next door who hasn't left the house since the scandal with his high school drama teacher. And there's Sarah Spratt, a highly organized 11 year old looking for a home for her prize winning chickens. So I found it great to, to change voices like that. It, there's a big contrast between them and there's a lot of humor in that contrast. Um, it's funny to hear what one character knows and the other one doesn't. And of course, there's often um, hijinks that ensue from that kind of situation. So it's a very Island of Misfit Toys kind of a crew. And that means by the end, you're, you're really rooting for them and their crop of radishes at the farmer's market. And there is a sequel called Republic of Dirt, which is excellent and also available in the library. And if she ever writes a third one, I will probably drop everything to read the third one as well. So for borrowing the Woefield Poultry Collective, you have a couple of options. We have it here in Overdrive, as well as the sequel, Republic of Dirt. There's a couple of her YA titles and her nonfiction, her biography, Nice Recovery, are available there too. We also have a few of them in Hoopla, so including the Woefield Poultry Collective. And I just wanted to point out her website, which is lots of fun, and she posts videos, and she has a blog, and it's there's lots of great stuff on there. So check that out too. My second recommendation this week is Gravity is the Thing by Jacqueline Moriarty, and she's for sure maximum quirkiness. Um, on the slide I put 
her photo, this one book, and also one of her older books, I Have a Bed Made of Buttermilk Pancakes, because I recommend that book too, so it's an extra bonus recommendation. And also I think the title alone tells you a lot about her levels of quirkiness. So Jacqueline Moriarty is an Australian author. She's another author that moved from writing mostly for a YA audience to an adult one, and I recommend any of her books. She has a very unique, sensitive, slightly magical, quirky take on the world, and she includes that voice in everything that she writes. On her website, she says, I grew up in Sydney with four sisters, one brother, two dogs, and 12 chickens, and most of us like to tell stories. The children, I mean, not the chickens. Our dad used to commission us to write them. You got $1.50 if you filled in an exercise book with words. And a little fun side fact, one of those sisters is Leanne Moriarty, who wrote the famous Big Little Lies. So a very talented family. Um, the book I'm recommending, Gravity is the Thing. This is the description. 20 years ago, Abigail Sorensen's brother Robert went missing one day before her 16th birthday, never to be seen again. That same year, she began receiving scattered chapters in the mail of a self-help manual, The Guidebook, whose anonymous author promised to make her life soar to heights beyond her wildest dreams. The Guidebook's missives have remained a constant in Abby's life, a befuddling yet oddly comforting voice through her family's grief over her brother's disappearance, a move across continents, the devastating dissolution of her marriage, and the new beginning as a single mother and cafe owner in Sydney. Now, two decades after receiving those first pages, Abby is invited to an all-expenses-paid weekend retreat to learn the truth about the guidebook. It's an opportunity too intriguing to refuse. If everything is indeed connected, then surely the twin mysteries of the guidebook and a missing brother must be linked. What follows is completely the opposite of what Abby expected, but it will lead her on a journey of discovery that will change her life and enchant readers. Gravity is the Thing is a smart, unusual, wickedly funny novel about the search for happiness that will break your heart into a million pieces and put it back together, bigger and better than before. And I have a little quote from Emily St. John Mandel, who wrote um, Station Eleven. She, her quote for the book is, a thoughtful, beautifully written, truly original and often hilarious meditation on hope, loss, the self-help industry and the difficulties of navigating life on earth. So I recommend anything by Jacqueline Moriarty. I love her voice. And I also recommend that you have a little patience. Um, I think it might grab you right away. It does grab me right away. But also her writing, in her writing, she likes to drop in dreamy little interludes that don't totally make sense immediately with the rest of the story. But I want to ask you to trust her. She has a plan and it will make sense in the end and it will be totally worth it. Jacqueline Moriarty's books are available on Hoopla with your library card, so you can see right here it's available as an ebook. And the other title that I mentioned, I Have a Bed Made of Buttermilk Pancakes, is here too as an ebook. I'll let you know too, this title right next to it, Spellbook of Listen Taylor, is actually the same book as I Have a Bed Made of Buttermilk Pancakes. It was republished in the US under a different title and slightly edited for a younger audience. So it's a little different, but essentially, I mean it's the same book. You don't you don't need to read both. Um, and then this series here we have on audiobook, which is one of her young adult ones that's kind of a fantasy and also so, so good. And I just wanted to show you her website too. It's great. She has her description up here. She's an author and a chocolate lover, which I can relate to. And then I thought this was really nice down at the bottom of this About Me page. She also includes some recommendations of her favorite things. So her favorite authors, some of her favorite music and favorite films. And I can see we have a lot of crossover. So I feel like it's not surprising that I'm a big fan of her work. My third quirky author recommendation this week is Drew Hayden Taylor, and the book is called Motorcycles and Sweetgrass. Drew Hayden Taylor is a super versatile writer, but humor is something that's woven through all the work that he does. And he's done a little bit of everything from stand-up comedy to writing for TV and film. He's created several collections of essays around different topics. He's had columns and journalistic individual pieces in newspapers and magazines. He has fiction that includes a YA novel about an Anishinaabe vampire and a short story collection called Take Us to Your Chief that our book club read last year and really liked it. And what he's most well known for and very prolific at is writing and producing plays. Drew Hayden Taylor is Ojibwe or Anishinaabe from Curve Lake First Nations in Ontario, which is just north of Peterborough, and that landscape features in a lot of the different things he's written. He's got a long list of awards spanning his 30 year career, which includes being shortlisted for the Governor General's Award for this novel, Motorcycles and Sweetgrass. So the book description is this. A story of magic, 
family, a mysterious stranger, and a band of marauding raccoons. Otter Lake is a sleepy Anishinaabe community where little happens, until the day a handsome stranger pulls up astride a 1953 Indian Chief motorcycle and turns Otter Lake completely upside down. Maggie, the reserve's chief, is swept off her feet, but Virgil, her teenage son, is less than enchanted. Suspicious of the stranger's intentions, he teams up with his uncle Wayne, a master of Aboriginal martial arts, to drive the stranger from the reserve. And it turns out that the raccoons are willing to lend a hand. So I went to his website and I found some quotes from some familiar names. So he has a section called Nice Things People Have Said. And under there I found Thomas King, who's another author, who says, Drew Hayden Taylor is one of those dangerous writers who knows the potential of humor and how far it can reach into society, how deep it can cut, and how quickly it can heal. And Richard Van Camp from Week One's recommendation says, Drew Hayden Taylor has woven an epic tale of magic, mystery, and charm for the world to discover in motorcycles and sweetgrass. This is a novel to savor, a complete delight. And one of the reasons I like all of his books is that humor. It's, it's such a strong part of it, and he's great at giving the characters strong voices and funny dialogue. I mean, he's a playwright after all, so dialogue is a really strong suit for him. Um, he's also great at doing that thing that I like in writers like Douglas Adams, where Ordinary people find themselves in these completely absurd situations, and they really use humor to cope. Um, and like the Susan GB one that I recommended, Motorcycles and Sweetgrass is really just like a motley crew of different character voices, and each of them is super distinct, and they're people that you will find yourself rooting for. Drew Hayden Taylor's books are available on two of our platforms, so you have your choice of Overdrive or Hoopla. This is Overdrive, and you can see there's quite a few things available here. And that includes Motorcycles and Sweetgrass, which I'm recommending, the short story collection, Take Us to Your Chief, the YA book about an Anishinaabe vampire, and there's these three that go together, which are his essay collections that examine and dismantle some stereotypes of Indigenous peoples, and some of his plays are available, so there's quite a lot of choice. And you can see that you have some choices in Hoopla as well. This is his author website, which has quite a lot of information on it. And then finally, I was just going to recommend a documentary that's available on CBC, so it's either on the website or if you have their app, Gem, you can stream it that way. So this is a documentary where when he was a writer in residence in the Yukon, he noticed a lot of German tourists who were looking for a very particular experience in North America. So he wanted to investigate that a bit further and he actually went all the way to Germany to, to do this documentary. So it's called Searching for Winnetou and it's definitely worth checking out as well. So those are my recommendations for this week of things that you can use your Cold Lake Track Pack library card to borrow online of quirky feel-good fiction. And those three authors are, are three of my favorites who have really unique, distinctive, and funny voices. So I hope you find them comforting and quirky good fiction to go to as well. So thanks for coming back for another week of recommendations. And as always, my email is at the end of the video, or there's a link down below to join us on our Facebook page to leave comments. So if you have a request or if you have suggestions of your favorite quirky fiction to recommend to other people, then come and join the conversation. We'd love to hear from you. And other than that, have a great week. See you next time.